I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Sam Harrison, the head of ecosystem growth at Harmony. Sam, welcome to the show and thanks for taking the time to come on. Hey, thanks for having me on, Ashton. This is uh, exciting. I really enjoy this. And I want to welcome you to an authentic Silicon Valley garage, which we <laughs> in Harmony affectionately refer to as the Harmony Garage. So welcome. Amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, it's really an honor to have Harmony on the show. I know your team is working super hard. You've been uh, bringing out lots of updates. There's lots of stuff to talk about in this video and some surprises at the end for the viewers. So stay tuned. I would love for you to kick us off by explaining a little bit about Harmony and the protocol for those who aren't familiar, and then we can dive into the details. Sure. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, as any of your viewers know who understand cryptocurrency and blockchain, um, we are level one or layer one blockchain. Uh, we're totally EVM compatible, which means that anything that you build and deploy on Ethereum or any of those other uh, EVM networks, you can also deploy on us very quickly. Mm -hmm. The question then becomes, why would you want to do that? Um, and the answer is, well, we have super fast finality. Transactions are finished within two seconds. We have thousands of transactions per second. Um, but the interesting thing about that is that we are the first production grade sharded proof of stake network, which means that we can scale horizontally to as many transactions as we need to scale to. Um, currently, we have four shards that are spun up, but that's just because that's what the demand is. You know, we could easily go more than that. Uh, on top of that, we also, you know, the thing is that that a lot of people think about is when we're looking at why you'd want to deploy on one chain versus another, the technology is pretty much the same. We're all about the same level. You know, some people have things a little bit better, some, but really what Harmony is, makes us different is our community and is the way in which we are actively engaged in creating a very robust and, and, uh, self-perpetuating ecosystem that embraces the future of multi-chain. Um, we're building as many bridges to as many different chains as possible. But at the end of the day, it's not just about building bridges to other chains. It's also about building bridges to people um, because that's what honestly blockchain is all about. It's about communities. And so when we talk about bringing people over and we talk about why people should deploy on us, that's what it is. Join our club. Be part of the group. Uh, you know, don't be exclusive. We make a joke that we're non-monogamous, um, but uh, definitely come and join us. And that's that's really what Harmony is about. Amazing intro, Sam. Thank you for that. And yeah, you're right about the community. I think that's super important. And especially having an open community and the fact that you mentioned there, it's all about multi-chain, having EVM compatibility. Uh, not trying to take away what's already been built in blockchain, but working together for a common goal, I think is super important. And speaking of community, uh, it seems like the latest um, organization of communities has to do with these DAOs, the Decentralized mm -hmm. Autonomous Organizations. And I'd love to hear how the community is sort of shaping into that and, and what's the vision with Harmony in, in DAOs. Yeah, uh, the vision of Harmony and DAOs is we are going to fund and back over a thousand DAOs over the next year or two. Wow. The it's a it's an ambitious goal, and it's not easy <laughs> um, because at the end of the day, you know, um, the difference between code and people is that when you design a piece of code, it'll operate exactly how you have it planned, more or less. Uh, you can't really do that with people; they're a little bit squishier. Um, yeah. But what we try to do is, like I said, kind of at the top about what makes Harmony different, is we try to bring in and create this community where we can share like the three central pillars of what DAOs are. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have a variety of different definitions of DAOs, but almost all of them say that you share assets mm -hmm. and you share accountability and you share interests. Um, the interesting thing about assets is a lot of the time, all you think about is it's a, a bank account or a pool of, of investable assets, but it's also information. Um, and that's one of the things that we really, really try hard to do is make sure that anybody in a DAO and anybody in the organization has as much information as anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, so at the end of the day, yes, DAOs are the future. We really, really believe that. It's also very early days and where we are, are building and learning and 
tripping up occasionally, uh, but we're pushing forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, great points. And you're right. Uh, humans are a little bit squishy uh, when it comes to, <laughs> you know, giving them a goal and, you know, getting uh, thousands or, or hundreds of thousands of people to work together on a common goal uh, when they're thinking differently. And to have a goal of, of, of funding, creating a thousand DAOs, um, I could see, you know, there will eventually will be tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of DAOs. But you're right about us being really early. And it seems like you need to work on the architecture and the functionalities of, you know, these, these trillion dollar corporations. There's a lot of intricacies, in business operations that go into uh, a, a large scale business, you know, and with the decentralized autonomous organization, eventually these will be autonomous organizations that could be as big as the largest companies in the world today. You know, and I think there needs to be a lot more functionality uh, that we're still working on right now as we are in early days. Yeah. Do you have any insight into how these DAOs can scale out and uh, grow to coordinate tens of thousands or more people? Uh, I do. Um, I, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm the guru when it comes to this. I just have a lot of experience here because I've been leading the DAO effort at Harmony. But what I will say from what I have learned is, uh, first off, you have to start with a little bit of a framework, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a minimally viable DAO that people use that's basically a, a multi-sig wallet, like a, a Gnosis safe multi-sig wallet and a snapshot in, uh, instance. So what that gives you is your shared account, your shared assets, and it gives you an ability to have shared responsibility or accountability to vote. Um, and that's the basic layer. But we've seen a variety of tools that have grown up like Aragon, um, like Dow House, like the Moloch Dow, that give you a framework to do more. And the more and more we can have those frameworks and those tools available, the better we'll end up being. One of the most interesting things that have happened in the last two or three months is a product called Cordon Ape, like APE, like I'm aping into something. Um, and they do an amazing job about peer balancing of the rewards for a project, right? So what would end up happening is I'd go in at the end of a weekend and say, okay, I'm working with these five people and I'm going to, I start the week with, let's say a hundred tokens um, that then I can divvy up amongst those five people saying, okay, yeah, you were great this week. You were fantastic. And so I was able to kind of um, uh, recognize that in a very peer related sense. And that's going to help. But at the end of the day, the biggest thing aside from tooling is the mental model. And that's actually been really difficult to adjust because DAOs are not a nine to five, right? They are a 24 by seven because they rely on that very first thing that we share, which is the shared interest. And shared interest means that I'm passionate about, I don't know, let's say it's a, a fishing DAO. I'm passionate about flat fishing. And so I think about it all the time and I wanna talk about it all the time. And I wanna do things to further the, the mission of a, a fishing DAO, a fly fishing. Um, and that's what we tap into. And that's actually the only way that DAOs can compete against these trillion dollar corporations is because it taps into this enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know the last time you had a nine to five, but I remember my last nine to five. Uh, sometimes I'll be driving to the office and I get stuck in a traffic jam and I just be like, you know what? I don't know why I'm doing this with my life. <laughs> like I would like, it literally would be like, I either go to work or I'm homeless and I guess I don't want to be homeless. So I'm going to go to work. Um, and that doesn't, that doesn't really capture productivity, doesn't capture creativity, doesn't capture innovation. Um, when you're talking about a trillion dollar organization, normally what happens is you have one CEO at the top that creates the vision and it can be amazing. And that vision can go really, really far, but it's one person. And so you're limited by that perspective. In a DAO, you're capturing the interest of everybody in that DAO. You're capturing the innovation. You're capturing the power and the passion. Um, and that's why I think it's going to really revolutionize where we're going. Words to live by, Sam. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be passionate about what you do and you got to be able to create a creative space uh, to explore and be able to, you know, express your truest self in the way that you want. And I know with Harmony and on the development side, you know, for builders, creators, um, you have a you have some incentivizations. You have platforms that are ready for people to use. 
there's the one to earn platform I was looking into. I'd love for you to talk about the tools available for builders and creators to truly express themselves. Yeah. So the one to earn program is, is very interesting because what we're trying to do is we're trying to decentralize employment payment. Um, like I, I'm trying to make sure I grab, basically the idea is, is when you are passionate about something, you're going to want to work, right? You're going to want to do something and hopefully you can get paid for that. So what we are trying to do, and of course there are hiccups every time you try to do something revolutionary, but what we're trying to do is say, okay, if you're going to say you're passionate about fly fishing, you're going to join a fly fishing DAO. And then you are going to, part of the DAO mission and mandate is to teach people fly fishing knots. I don't know. I'm totally making up this analogy off the top of my head. So if it doesn't work, then my apologies. <laughs> but the idea is, is that I'll hold a tutoring session for an hour and teach a bunch of people how to do fly fishing, um, fly fishing knots. And then I can actually send an invoice to the fly fishing DAO that says, okay, for $75 an hour, whatever it is, I did this project to further it. And then the DAO, they can all vote on it and pay you, right? Mm -hmm. And this is one of the ways that which we are trying to realize the promise of cryptocurrency, which was at the very beginning of the work, the very beginning of the effort was to unshackle us from the traditional finance burdens, right? We're trying to get away from that and say, okay, you don't need to rely all the time on that nine to five and those banks and all that stuff. You can rely on yourself. You can have personal accountability. Um, so yeah, and that's what the one to earn is really about. It's trying to create this, this mechanism and this flywheel to break those shackles and, uh, and enable personal financial freedom. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, no, I, I think it's great, <laughs> you know, to be able to put up uh, to do whatever job you want and to put up a uh, proposal to be like, hey, there's value in this. Somebody mm -hmm. in the community, you know, the community should agree that I should be paid for, you know, my value that I'm creating. Exactly. And that's what it is. And part of it, you know, there is there there are always challenges um, because sometimes people will value what they contribute more than what the community values. Sure. Right. And so you have some trade offs, you have some mechanisms for that. Um, but at the end of the day, this is very different than me. So as a story, let me tell you. So my undergraduate degree was in philosophy uh, with ethical systems was my emphasis. And I realized pretty quickly that I could never walk into a company and tell them, hey, pay me to tell you what you're doing wrong. Right. That's just not what they're going to do, even though that's my passion and that's my skill set. And I find that valuable. No company is going to pay me to tell them that they're ethically problematic. Uh -huh. um, and so that's what this is working to solve. Right. I have this skill set. I have this this concept, this idea, and I'm trying to figure out a way for the community and large groups of people to recognize that value as well. Definitely. Yeah. And with this ambitious goal of creating all these DAOs and building the infrastructure and having the community, I know you have a strong community, but I'd love to get some kind of snapshot of where's this all at with Harmony right now. Sure. Um, so strong community, definitely. So a couple of different places you can find us. Um, on Twitter, we have roughly 200,000 followers on uh, at Harmony Protocol, um, which, you know, smaller than like, you know, Ashton Kutcher, is he still like the bigot? No, he's not. Uh, I'm old, obviously, so I don't follow it exactly who's the, the biggest on Twitter these days. Um, on our subreddit, we have roughly 40,000. Um, same with our Telegram channel and same with our Discord. It's, you know, 20, 30, 40,000. Um, but our community is very, very involved. In fact, this is one of the interesting things about working on an open protocol is every now and then I will find a project that is amazing that I had no idea existed. Um, actually, this happened not too long ago. I knew what was happening, but I had no idea it was this big. There's this project on Harmony called DeFi Kingdoms. Mm -hmm. That is massive. I mean, it's talking like almost 250 million total value locked on the, on the program. And I, had, well, I knew it exists, but I had no idea, right? I had no idea it was this big until I went and looked at it myself. And it's a really cool program. Um, but that's what we like. I mean, we're an open platform anybody can build on us yeah. um so yeah i mean it's it's that's kind of a snapshot of what we're doing we have i did a calculation the other day 40 ish DAOs already established we have something on the order of of 500 active governors 
on those. Um, we've done, they have had over 300 different votes regarding like community directions. So it's active. Very cool. I like it. We're on the way towards <laughs> the future of decentralized organizations on the internet. And I couldn't be happier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I was looking for, you know, I know there's a lot of different uh, dApps that are being built as well on Harmony, just like DeFi Kingdom you mentioned. And there are a lot of developers that could potentially be working with Harmony that, as you said, they, they, they've heard about it, but they just don't know that there's all these tools and mm -hmm. it's ready to go. And I, I, is there some incentivizations uh, oh, yeah. for developers to build on Harmony as well? Yeah, definitely. So we're running right now a, a $300 million ecosystem grants program. Um, and you can get a lot of the details at harmony.one slash 300. And I'll break down kind of all the different categories and what we're looking for in those categories. You know, they could be projects that are coming from other chains, right? We're EVM compatible. And so we want to see if you have huge traction on Ethereum, then bring your... You don't have to leave Ethereum to come to Harmony. You can just deploy on us as well and grow your own personal community. Um, also, launch grants and bounties and events and DAOs. There's just a long list of, of what we're funding. Um, and for further detail on that, you can look at harmony.one slash apply, and that'll break down some more details about, okay, how does this grant actually work? Um, if you want to see kind of how this works, because we are totally open you can visit talk.harmony.one, our forum, and you can see people apply. And you can see me and, and several of my colleagues responding and showing what we're doing to evaluate them in an open setting. Like none of this is happening behind closed doors. Yeah. Um, and so the few people that I've, I've, I've declined, you can see why I declined them. And all the people that I have approved, you can see why I approved them. Very cool, Sam. Yeah, I will leave all those links in the description box below for the viewers to get involved with the community. And I appreciate you taking the time to come on to talk about Harmony. All the best with this grand vision of all of these DAOs and, and bringing on, growing the cryptocurrency ecosystem. I appreciate the, the family effort with the compatibility and having a multi-chain vision. Uh, we can all grow to uh, build this future decentralized world. So thank you so much, Sam. I appreciate it. And let's follow up in the near future. Looking forward to it. Thank you for having me on.